Hey guys, uh, it's been a while. Um, today's just a quick look at some EK stuff that I recently got in. Um, we're gonna start off with the OGA 1700 block. Uh, this block is for the Intel Z690. Um, it's a little late to the party because this has been out for a little bit now. I have on hand the nickel, which is pretty hefty, and the acetal, which is much lighter. Um, I have the satin one sometime next week. Uh, I didn't get the Plexi. I didn't ask for the Plexi. The reason being is I personally not a huge fan of Plexi blocks. Um, GPU is a little different, but CPU, I find that no matter, regardless of brand, they're, they're very prone to cracking, even if you're extremely careful. Just multiple uses will crack the Plexi. I mean, EK will sell you a replacement Plexi top for like 20 bucks, depending, but I just don't like the look that much. Um, for GPU blocks, it's a little different, but I'm gonna show you guys a very nice GPU block in a second uh, after this. This is the, um, oh yeah, this is the nickel one, right? Yeah, uh, disclaimer, uh, EK sent me these blocks. Um, they have been very good to me since, you know, for some time, uh, they sponsors any build that I want to do. Um, I wouldn't say that, this does not influence my opinion at all. <laughs> I've actually have had a very tumultuous relationship, you would say, with EK. Um, I had fights with them on social media a while back, and I even got banned from the EK web store, EK Twitter, and all that. Um, and then eventually, you know, uh, we, we got to play nice. And the reason I had such an issue with EK was that I felt... Their quality wasn't that great, but they were charging the highest prices. And you know, at that at some point, some of the EK products were not really up to par. Like the Threadripper block when it first launched, that was the main thing for me. That they just took a Supremacy Evo, extended the code plate, and then you know called it a day. And uh, luckily, all those crappy guys at EK went to Corsair, so that's why the Corsair blocks is shit. But that's a whole nother story. Um, but let's just open this here. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna open the black one at the same time. Uh, is this open? No, it's not. So you gotta look at the acetal. I think you still get RGB on the acetal. Uh, it's this little strip right here is what does the RGB. So if you're into that thing, then you still have RGB, even if you get a solid like mine. Um, but this is really hefty, guys. This is really heavy. Um, let's see the acetal. Very off the cuff video. I don't plan my videos. Probably tell. Um, if you like a well planned video, sorry. Uh, this is a black. We'll pop this open. Take a look. Uh, all right. So that's the black. Uh, very smooth. No finishing mark errors. That's nice. Much lighter than the metal top. That's why I always like the metal tops. You'll pay the premium, but you don't have to worry about scratching them so much. They're not as, like, you know, when you turn the fittings in, they're not as prone to scratching. And this is the exact mount, which we will get into in a second. So let's put this on the side. I'm just going to show you this exact mount. I have not looked at the directions. I have never installed one of these blocks yet, but I think it's, like, you don't even need instructions, guys. It's, it's so... Self-explanatory. Post this awkward moment of getting the block to mount off. Come on, come on. Oh, there you go. Okay, so, um, quick, quick thing. For you guys with the ASUS boards, uh, you'll have the old mounting positions and the new mounting positions. Uh, you'll probably be like, why should I spend more money? Why should I spend money? Why should I buy another block? Okay. So, if you don't know, having the right block on LGA 1700 can improve your temperatures up to 10 degrees. Now, there are people playing the washer game, etc. I personally haven't played the washer game. I don't know the washer game well, and I don't want to play the washer game. Um, I know you can still play the washer game with these blocks if you really want to, um, but I think unless you're in that OCD category or you're really trying to go for a very top score, you know, that's... Okay, if you have a chiller and you're trying to get the best out of it, play the washer game, okay? I totally get that. But for folks like me, there's no point playing the washer game. Um, this is the 
uh, master Z690, you'll see it has the 1700 holes. And what I'll do is I'll just come back here. Remind you if I'm doing this wrong, it's because I didn't read the manual. And it just drops in. You see that? No fidgeting with the holes, no nothing. It's exactly lined up. If I flip it over, there you go. It's exactly in place. And that is essentially what they consider exact mount, right? So now I just rest this somehow, you know. Okay, a little awkward on video, but you get the idea. So you rest it into place, you drop the block on top, and that's all you have to install. So let's just do that real quick for the, this, the master board. I'm not 100% sure I'm do, what I'm gonna do with that yet. But this board, um, I haven't done a video on it, but I'm sure you guys may have seen some of you guys that watched my Instagram. I have the uh, X Forma. And I, this is pretty much the board that will go into the X Forma build. It's been slacking. Um, I haven't been working on it because I have other stuff to do. But since this chip is going to be in here and we're, you know, I've already tested this. Let me phrase. Always test your hardware before you mount your water blocks on. Okay. Like if I didn't test this chip, I didn't test this board, then I play that game with the water blocks. I'm gonna have a lot of, you know, I put my loop together. I'm not gonna have a good time if something's broken. Okay. So troubleshoot, make sure it boots, use an AIO, use an air cooler, whatever you need to do, just make sure it boots before ahead of time. And for me, I'm just, I'm gonna do a little bit larger than a P because I think that. IHS is a little larger than the original Intel IHSs. Okay. Um, you don't have to be exact. Mounting pressure will do a good job. You can always check afterwards. You know, if you don't feel confident that you have a good spread, just take the cooler off and take a look. Right? I mean, technically, you could, you could smooth it out yourself and probably get a better spread. But honestly, for the one to two degrees, I'm a regular water cooling guy. I don't really care. And... This is, and I have to say, I really like this. I really like the attention to detail on these mouth brackets. Hold on. After my awkwardness of taking this off on camera. Okay. All right. But you see this exact mount? The, the bracket is just, it's very nice. I, I like this attention to detail because I'm not going to see this bracket, right? But yeah, it's still, it's got the EK logo. It's got the exact mount. It's a nice touch, you know? And I'm going to somehow awkwardly put this on. Uh, okay. So I think if I had the motherboard in a case, this would be a lot easier. But since I don't... Um, Alright guys, I'm actually going to stop the video to where I screw this on. This is kind of awkward. It's very exact fit. It's actually probably easier on a board that doesn't have the 1200 holes. Uh, but yeah, you just put the block in. You can hand screw it from the back you know, till it's tight, and then just use a Allen wrench to finish it up. Uh, it's nice that the bracket already has the plastic. It's a plastic bracket, so don't, you know, use common sense. Don't tighten till no tomorrow. Once you feel you hit the end, just stop. Um, this design does, with it being plastic, you don't need to worry about, you know, having the washer, etc. And once you have it on, just take a look. I mean, if it looks flush, I don't know if you can see on camera here, but if it looks flush, then you're you're done. Uh, don't 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 make it into a whole exercise, okay? And I'll save the peel for the last part, but I see some fingerprints on there, <laughs> so somebody wasn't wearing gloves. Uh, that's good. That's okay. Um, I will put the plastic back on till I till I need to remove it. So this block is staying on here. That's pretty much. I routed the wire ready because I should have put it through one of the posts. As I already know, I don't like RGB wires, and this is one I'm gonna have to deal with. Um, but that's that. Um, so let me put this aside, and we'll move on. I realized I didn't take a look into this block yet. So this black one, let's just take a look inside, okay? Um, at the core itself. Because I don't think most people are gonna take the block apart. And, um, Let's take a look. I mean, most pictures you see online, etc. But let's take the block apart. See how easy it is to get replacement parts and etc. Uh, if you look in the manual this time, uh, EK has listed the part numbers for every piece of this block. 
So if you wanted, I'm sure if you wanted just a different color top, you can easily get the number and then ask them for it. Okay, so there's more to it than just... All right, so this bracket is obviously held on by more than just this. Um, I didn't look at the breakaway diagram too carefully, so we're gonna play this as we go. Hopefully there's no O-ring that got stretched that becomes hard to put back. I had that on the uh, EK TRX 40 blocks. Uh, I mean, X399, not, not the magnitude, uh, but the velocity one where that O-ring is impossible to put back. Um, but let's see on this one here. This is another reason why I keep the plastic on until I, it's in the build on the front. This way, when I do stuff like this, I don't end up scratching it unintentionally. And oh my, I see it has the micro clips. Okay. Um, hopefully I don't have to remove those clips. I really hate those clips. Uh, I think I may have to remove those clips. I'm not sure. Let's find out. I hope I don't. Does it feel like some of this? Maybe those clips just hold in the four sides. Something's coming loose. At least it feels like it. Okay. Let's Ooh, RGB, RGB. Okay. So... That's the RGB portion. All right. So as you can see, oh, I should have kept the plastic on. Oops. It's okay. It's good. But if you want to replace your RGB strip, that's how you would do it. Uh, these rarely go bad, but if they do go bad, EK will send you another one. And you just have to take the screws off the rear of the block. And there you go. And this is a diffuser. Um, I think they're the same for all the blocks at this point then. Okay, this looks like it. Anyway, I'll figure that out. Um, block your block itself. I no, nope, thinking. I hear the jet plates loose in there, but it's not. Oh, there we go. All right. So, oh, that's a pretty thick jet plate. So you got a pretty thick jet plate. Interesting fin doesn't. Fin array, you actually see kind of the marks from the middle. You have the O-ring. So no interchangeable jet plates this time for orientation, uh, like the old supremacy blocks. I want to say this looks similar to the magnitude, like in terms of design. I want to say it's very similar to the magnitude. Um, it looks like it is. Uh, and obviously the top kind of just forms a flow pattern. So I guess, oh, there's another screw here. Does this hold the top down? Let's find out. And yeah, you can always get replacement tops. You may even be able to get them in different finishes. Uh, they're usually pretty cool about that if they don't sell the finishes themselves. All right, so here we go. Okay, you have two little O-rings here. So if you want to put it back together, make sure those two O-rings are where they are. Um, and you have, yep, so the block creates the flow pattern. And then you have the mounting screws. That's pretty much it. So, yep, O-rings would have to be in here. So, I'm just going to put that there. So, yeah. So, if you wanted to get a different color, different color top or whatever, you can always ask them for a new piece. Or if you wanted to paint it, um, you can just mask this off real well. Um, but, yeah. That's pretty much it. It's a very simple design in terms of, you know, assembly. They're very nice. Do wait, is that backwards? E no. That's strange. I didn't see that O-ring earlier. No, this is wrong. Uh hold on. Slight brain fart moment. <laughs> I didn't realize it could the screws got covered. It just didn't occur to me for a second. But that looks right now. Okay. So, put it back together. I think I'm going to be painting one of them. Mm, maybe not this one, but maybe another one. Uh, okay. So, 
Let's figure out how this funny and this is this okay, you know what? No, that's Okay. So let's just get let's get the cold plate back on first. We can do the RGB afterwards. Um don't think there was I think the LGA is on the bottom. It should only go in one way. Okay, so that's oh whoops. So it should be like this. Yeah. That makes sense. This in this place. There we go. That makes sense to me. Uh, let me see. So there, when you look through the jet plate, there is a slit from the top cover, uh, so it only goes in that way. They've done it now, so you can't really mess it up the way you put it back. Um, there's also an indicator on the corner here, which I think is uh, telling you orientation to the CPU. Um, I may be wrong, but I doubt that. Um, and there you go. You can see the block is very assembly friendly. If you needed a replacement part, you can definitely do this yourself. Uh, or you want to clean the block out, they've made it fairly easy. Um, I'll put the rest. In. So let's just see how this silly rgb -ness goes. Okay, so. This seems to just go on like this. We thread it through. Or if you want to remove the RGB, like I may on that nickel one, you can just pull the strip out. And then you don't have to worry about the wire if you don't want an RGB. Or you want to kind of see there you go and then you just have to screw the screws back and you are good to go so that's pretty much it for this block um i think it might be running a little long so i'm going to separate the the other block onto another video and uh we'll cut it off from here so thanks you guys for watching um I got three projects lined up. Uh, one is in a Lian Lee Odyssey. I'm sure you guys have seen the photos for that, uh, the case. It is painted, that's why it looks the way it does. You might think I bought a black or silver one. I, I, what I did was I bought a silver one and I painted it, but I removed all the paint from the edges to give that kind of, I don't know, ghetto diamond cut. So, but that, that's how, that will be coming up very soon. After that, or somewhere around that, I actually have a Fractal Torrent um, Compact, uh, the new one that I'm working on. Uh, Fractal actually sent me that case, so thank you Fractal. Um, I've painted it, so it's not standard white, gray, and black. I don't know if they're, did they make a gray one of that? I'm not too sure. So I've painted it blue. Um, I have to repaint the inside. It came white. I painted it this kind of gray, grayish silver, but it came out too dark. And I can't match any motherboards to it without painting a motherboard. And most motherboard paint jobs look funny. So I'm very, I'm very picky about things that look funny. Um, so I'm going to have to figure out something with that. And then after that, I will be heavily working on this X Forma. And this X Forma will be dope. I can tell you that much. That's pretty much the most important build to me this year period. And I will get into why when I have that done. Uh, that build is actually um, um, kind of a memory of somebody. Okay, so thanks for watching and uh, take care. And I'll start another video with the 3090 block that I want to show you guys.